but I can see on the Colonial Heights side, Error Code 404 and Alpha Go Trions are already lining back up, getting ready to go again. This will be their last match. But once again, Gear Freaks and this uniform. And I just noticed their uniform, some of them actually have the names on it, it looks like. I so, love that, right? Fun fact, that actually was, I don't know if they keep it up to date every year, but back in like Block Party, they used to print their robot on their shirt before the first competition. Like the actual robot. And then I think they, they did that for a few years. Every last second. Yeah, I guess it was the uh, prototype. And this looks like an older robot, and so there may have been a few repeat years, but it's just a cool team spirit thing. And teams, remember, we love that spirit. That's one thing that we definitely miss. But speaking about things that we miss... Yeah, but I mean, I guess, like, you know, you, you still have, like, you're losing the being next to each other vibe of the whole thing where you can just, like, hey, like, hey, like poke on the arm and say, don't go there, my robot's going to shoot from there, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a score, 283. And Colonial Heights, we're going to move right to Fulton. And they look at these way. one one once again, this is the Cybirds and the Gear Freaks. I believe we've seen these two teams play together. I don't think we've seen them play against each other. And look at that. Yeah, I love the fact that we're alternating um, with and against. It just brings out all the different aspects of each robot. Because you may not see them when they're playing together. And they'll pick a role and stay there. But when you're competing against each other, you can see the full capabilities of each team. Totally. Definitely emphasizes the whole cooperation. Yeah. yeah. You know, they can pick up more than one ring. They just picked up two and put it in the low goal. Now they've got one out of two, but this seems to be very consistent. They can pick up whatever's on the ground and drop it right in there. Now, I want to see how that scooper works for those wobble goals now. We're going to find out. If correctly, that thing should be able to get both of them. Like, can we just look at that funky face on that robot? Yes, I love the Gear Freak space. And then, is that also, a... So, last week, they didn't have eyebrows. I, Here we I go. don't think they had eyebrows. I think, on the I think they added that on. You must have added that on. They're going to go for two. Yeah. But it almost looks like a cute little puppy because it has the claw and the back, so it looks like a tail. <laughs> That's funny. I see it. I totally see it. Go. I just want to go walk my robot. Wow, that... Two wobble putting up points. So this is this is actually oh, is an a interesting problem? lesson. As a low goal shooter, this team has put up sixty three points. That is that awesome. gives credit to that driver control and also those wobble goals because we saw them moving with those wobble goals. But I do believe we also just saw Gear Freak shoot out those last two power shots. In the final second. Yep. And so the score will go to the Red Alliance with a 35 autonomous over a 5 point autonomous, a 22 point driver control to the 18 point driver control, and a 30 point end game to a 40 point end game. Showing that that end game power from those bubble goals does put up a lot of points, but that early autonomous, the difference was visible. 35 points to a 5 point auto, so only a parking and versus the park, the wobble, and the power shot, probably. I want to point out, too, that driver control, 18 points and for low goal shooter. Goals. That's, 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 <laughs> yeah, that is, low goals. That is amazing. That is a lot of running the field. Oh, wow. There's a lot to be said about, like, the efficiency of that mechanism to being able to use, like, the same scooper for the wobble goals and for the shots. Um, that's definitely going to make, like, some stuff easier in terms of spacing on your robot and design. Oh, definitely. So, There's definitely a ton of features that are very much so helped by that. I cannot wait yeah. to see these two teams playing on the same one. So oh, we have one yes. more match of them being against each other, I believe, we before do. we go to the We conference. do. So I want to see one more head-to-head. -head. I want a nice, clean match, you know. No bolts on the floor. 
No, no googly eye gouging. <laughs> Gotta protect those diapers and gear freaks. They are setting up over in Fulton. But hey, let's take a look at what our next two teams are going to be over at Colonial Heights. I believe Ethan is going to be jumping down there, one of our commentators from before, because he is team, team 4924, the Red Beard Pandas, are going to be over there. And they're going to be alongside Team 7039, Lord of the Bricks. And Lord of the Bricks, if, remind me if I'm wrong, was that team that had the uh, construction hat with a actual minifigure head on, on top of it. Right. That I cannot verify, but it does sound good. Like it. I, or otherwise, I remember they had the they had the shirts with the oh no, they had the shirts with the Gandalf minifigure. Yes, they are that team. They are that team. Again, in Colonial Heights, we have um, relatively older teams here with uh, the Redbeard Pandas rookie year being in 2010. And Lord of the Bricks having their rookie year in 2013. So it's cool to see, you know, how these older teams have stayed in shape, have managed to weather the pandemic and also all the challenges of previous years as well, and still deliver strong in 2021. Really, really impressive. And over right. in the Twitch chat, they are lighting up. We got the Gear Freaks in the chat. We got Crabotics in the chat. Team, if you're here, let us know. Who are you with? Call out your team name. Call out your team numbers. We'd love to see you guys. Super cool and comment. It's, uh, uh, oh, that's Chris Bolton. You're so right about that. And it's a very sweet, very sweet autonomous. Randomization B. Sweet honey. Well, that's, yeah. All right, that was lame. Yeah, <laughs> that was not lame, though. Hitting the power shot right there. And that one, too. Uh... We got Park, and we got Park. Both teams, though, scoring 30 for the Blue Alliance and 20 for Red. <clears throat> and now, underway with Telly. Nah. Driver control. Well. All right, so we've got well, all the wobble there. goals in the right place for a double wobble goal on the red alliance. We saw them do that last match. I think you just look at the score difference already just coming out of Autonomous. What looked like, I believe, 35 points to 20. I'm still Seems not like there catching up. Yeah, sometimes the end game, it's, it's interesting to see whether the end game will help them catch up or not because. Auto and Endgame are really I mean, good. Teams. We saw that Endgame last time where that 40 point Endgame did beat a 30 point Endgame, but that autonomous period of 5 points to 35 points was a very big difference. I really cannot get over the face on the Gear Freaks robot. Every time they turn around, like I get such a, a rush of dopamine. Oh my god, very, very exciting. I'm trying to decide, is it like is a Muppet that? face, or is it a, uh, like, is it a Muppet well, it, it looks like it's going to grow with those eyebrows. I was going to say it looks like Animal. From, like, Could be Animal, really any of the Muppets that have big, hairy eyebrows. But you I, were saying a robotic dog earlier, right, now. Yeah, it, it's because of that tail. It looks like a robo-dog, but then it drives back. <laughs> and it goes to use the tail, so I don't know how to see it. Just then, it looked like a double hit on the uh, on the power shots. I'm not sure if that happened. It, or it I just before, it. So I, ooh, I do think, though, I accidentally saw one ring getting shot outside the ring. Yeah, on the side of the... I think it was gear for... Yeah, for Shot it out. An accidental shot at the Cybirds. Remember, teams, shoot at the goal, not at your opponents. Shoot at the shoot directly <laughs> ahead. Our referees do like picking up rings at the end of the match. They do not like getting rings in the middle of the match. Also, yeah, I know last week 
we had a ton of teams who um, they would almost pick up four and then shoot it out right away, but they um, wouldn't take the time to make sure they were aiming the right way first. Um, so that definitely wasn't ideal, but they solved the problem quickly, which was. And there it is, 81-78. Very close with that 10 points coming off, which we had discussed for that minor penalty. But so if we look at these point breakdowns, the 35-point auto to a 20-point auto, a 26-point driver control to an 18-point driver control, and once again, that 30-point end game to a 40-point end game. So we can see that both teams are very consistent with their end game, and the beer freaks are very consistent with their auto. I want to see Cybird's auto get a little bit more consistent. If they can hold that 20, that would still be a very decent auto. But next, both of these teams are going to be on the same side. But speaking about teams, let's talk about our other teams over at Colonial Heights, Maryland. The teams in the Southwest Virginia... Nothing else matters whatsoever. It's like the whole world goes dark, except for the robots. Let's go a little dark. But here we see the Cybers starting off. Like I said, it looks like a little dog wagging its tail. Hey, I think that ring got stuck on the wall. I think both of those rings got stuck on the power shots. One pushing, you're right. forward, one pushing it forward. Here but, comes the alliance partner. See if they can get it to B. Nope. Yeah, it's the right distance, but the wrong starting position to get to B. You guys can't tell me that part. Looks like a little dog. It looks like a little pug or something almost. It's like, it's like, you, you know, the team Robotic Dog reminds me of uh, Robotic Dog. So true. Dog, 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 dog. I just want to see them, like, shake the robot. It's like, if that back arm articulates by itself, just, just whack the tail. That's all you need. <laughs> you know what that robot actually looks like? Back in Block Party, I think it was G-Force or one of the teams from Western Maryland had a, a moving silicone piece with a tongue. It would rotate really fast and lick up cubes. Um, I could be wrong about the years. <laughs> That's so funny. Years. And it was a, a oh, giant awesome. tongue. And remember, teams, the only something you can get a lot of awards for is those creativity awards. You don't have to have the best field performing and best scoring robot. Just having a bot that is very helpful or has a very unique piece. Sometimes just the team spirit and the outreach can get you to that next level. I know, personally, we used to do a lot of mentoring with other teams, and also my team was very loud. We would put our whole cheerleaders up in the stand. We would get people making noise and having banners and all sorts of other things. There's plenty of ways to move forward without having the highest scoring bots. Absolutely. I honestly, I feel like... strategy down there where uh, I was watching earlier where they were feeding uh, upwards, yeah, they were feeding, yeah, they're feeding up, which is great. And now we're getting ready for the end game at 30 seconds. I want to see if they can get that double wobble, but they might get a little stuck over here. Teams, remember, right. if you have that low clearance, those little rings are a big oh, hazard, they are stuck right on it, too. That little they need a parking boot. partner to get off of there. That little parking boot can definitely be a hindrance. Okay, is that going to try and help? Oh, not going to do it. Just feeding. Oh, there we go. Last oh, oh, that, oh, you got to get the other one down. Oh, they, they, they knocked it back up. Did you see that? Yeah, they knocked two down. down, and, one down, down. and one came back up. And remember, teams, it's not about did you knock it back. It is what is their final resting position. Do they lay back or that? does it? So it was never really... <laughs> more confusing except for when we were on the blue side. Mm. Seeing the big red robot Colton, driving past. Colton's underway, right in position A. Oh, Going for the power shots right here in the auto. Looks like they'll get two. Maybe going to try another one. No, going to park. And then the other robot's coming out now. Nine seconds remaining. Can they score? Oh. Going for B. All right, we're going to park there. Two parks, which is nice. A couple of power shots down. Set them up very well for the beginning of the match at 40 points in autonomous. 
And that is a wonderful starting score to look at. These two teams already underway with that 40 points sitting on the board. Now, we've seen once again that these two teams are very complementary. One thing that we've seen is they will feed each other. Another thing that we've seen is one will go for power shots and one will go for the wobble goals. There are so many different ways to help each other out in these matches. You all do not have to compete for the same resources. There are 20 rings on that field. We see the, the low goals accuracy once more. They're really, really efficient uh, just grabbing rings from the human player station over to their uh, deposit zone. Now, I think they might have a ring stuck on their bot. They do have one ring stuck at the back of their robot um, at the, okay, the end of that clock. I, I think it just fell off, actually. No, so it, no, 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 it didn't. It just a little fell piece. Off. Yeah. It's right in their zone, which is really interesting. Um, now, team, another, thing, really another thing that we talk about all the time is that driver control. Ladies, um, I believe both of you guys said that you guys were on your drive team before. Uh, how did that, how did that driver's practice go? How did that team practice go as far as communicating with your team, making sure that you guys were able to drive and do really well on the field? Yeah, I mean, I was drive coach for a little bit. I, I'm not a video game person. I don't really know how the, the game controller functions, so that would not have been very good for me. But I was drive coach for a little bit, and I think one of the really important things is trying to have certain um, keywords established with you and your drivers so that um, everyone is kind of on the same page to say things like, oh, position one, for example, is going to be much more efficient than saying like, oh, like go left, go right, like go around because everyone's left and right is a little bit different or you can mix up your left and right as I am very prone to doing. So that's my big tip. Get turned around. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Pretty high scoring match that. here again with 128 points. Super impressive work. Um, Really huge score in Endgame, especially with 70 points there. Uh, we really love seeing this collaboration. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with what Monica said about the score. Those are so important to know what your teammate is talking about when you're in such a stressful situation that moves to play. Yeah. I think one of the other big things, that, like you said, those key words and those terms going back and forth between the teams. I know some of my teams, we used to have little phrases or little quirks. And depending on what little quirk or what little phrase we had, it was a little secret code to say, hey, do this. Hey, go that way. But then again, our, t our drivers used to practically go to classes together, go play sports together, they would go eat lunch together. Mm -hmm their hands on the controllers together they would go play video games together they were completely heartbeats were synced their breaths were <laughs> they must feel the same thing at one point I drove, with my I drove with my brother for a few years and there's definitely like a non-verbal communication that exists between siblings or really close friends or that no one else has and I think that was really cool to kind of to see that it's really cool to work with your sibling or your friend and something that's so cool and uh totally i mean i, I think, think that's one of the things that i actually think is better about ftc compared to like larger leagues like frc because you're in like a tighter environment um everyone is really really close because you are in such close proximity you're working together basically all the time it's hard not to love your teammates at that point <laughs> I think one of my funniest moments was I transferred schools my sophomore year. Mm. Uh, right before, I think, probably second week of FRC build season, I transferred schools. When I transferred schools, I was still carpooling with my friend who went to the same school as me because he lived, I mean, who went to my old school because he lived right across the street. So for that whole build season, we were just trading off information. <laughs> On our way to school, dropping each other off, and <laughs> it's really funny because teams are like, "How do you know so much about that other thing?" Well, I mean, I used to go there, and I sort of kind of drive with their new uh, right. captain. 
Yeah, I mean, that's peak race. That, that penalty deficit right there, but they still did some shooting, which is good. I mean, with a 10 point driver control, that is still very decent. That's still very good. Yeah. And I think we're headed back to Fulton now, actually. So with 156 points on the board, I'd love to see the breakdown from this. And remember, teams, all of these matches are recorded. So even though you all aren't able to fully see that match, you will still be able to go look back at our YouTube channel for Chesapeake to be able to see what has been posted. Check out the end game period score yet again with 70 points. That is very consistent and really, really high scoring um, for the blue teams. Working together, that's that, hey, I'm going to take the wobble goals, you want to take the power shots. Hey, I know I can guarantee these points. And teams, we talk about that all the time. Guaranteed points versus possible points. And can we take a look at Colonial Heights real quick? Because I believe we have Ethan talking to us with that whiteboard again. 